You see, friends, the crowd was right in their profession of who Jesus is. He is the one who saves. He is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He is the king in the line of David. He is the Messiah. Friends, He is the exact representation of God's glory. The Word made flesh. He is the perfect embodiment of the revelation of God. In Genesis 3, as we've said, He is the promised seed that will crush the head of the serpent. In Genesis 12, He's the promised blessing to the whole world that will come through Abraham's line. In Genesis 49, He is the promised Shiloh, the promised peacemaker. He's the one pictured in the Passover in Exodus. He's the one pictured as the scapegoat in the Day of Atonement in Leviticus 16. The one who should be lifted up like the bronze serpent was in Numbers 21, who we can turn to and be saved. The promised prophet of Deuteronomy chapter 18. He is the captain of the host of the armies of the Lord who Joshua worshipped and trusted in for the conquest. He is the true deliverer that all the judges point to the need for. He is the eternal king in the line of David that God sovereignly preserved through Ruth. The one truly pictured in the kinsman redeemer. He is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant in Samuel. He is the righteous king that all the kings of Israel showed the need for in Kings and Chronicles. He is the one whose law Ezra set his heart on to study as God freed his people from captivity. He is the one who led the people through the rebuilding under Nehemiah. He is the one who, without even being mentioned by name, preserved Esther and Mordecai and all the people of God and saw their enemies hung on the gallows that they had constructed for them. He is the Redeemer who Job knew he would see. The Redeemer who lives and that he knew he would see. He is the royal Messiah celebrated in the Psalms. He is the Lord who the fear of brings life to in Proverbs. He is the one who will judge all the deeds of vanity done under the sun that Solomon talks about in Ecclesiastes. He is the kingly bridegroom of his bride, the church, the ultimate testimony of faithful marriages like Solomon in the Song of Solomon. He is the suffering servant through whose stripes we are healed in Isaiah. He is the one who ushers in the new covenant in Jeremiah. The one who Jeremiah relied on for mercy in the midst of his lament and lamentations. He is the one who brings life to the valley of dry bones. And as we have already seen, replaces our hearts with hearts of flesh in Ezekiel. He is the son of man who brings about the messianic reign in Daniel. He is the faithful husband who redeems the harlotrous bride in Hosea. He is the judge of the day of the Lord described in Joel. He is the one who saves the faithful remnant in Amos. He is the righteous judge of Obadiah. He is the savior of the Gentiles that we see in Jonah. The ruler who will free Israel from sinful rulers and enemy oppressors in Micah. He is the one whom Nahum tells us will not allow the wicked to go unpunished. He is the object of faith for the righteousness for the righteous who live by faith in Habakkuk. He is the one who Zephaniah tells us brings hope and restoration to the people who repent. He is the one who will destroy the enemies of the Lord, the ones who try to prevent the people from rebuilding in the book of Haggai. He is the coming king and shepherd who will restore the people in Zechariah. He is the one who will be preceded by Elijah and restore the hearts of the people before the great and terrible day of the Lord that's recorded in Malachi. He is the one heralded in the Gospels. In Matthew, he is the Davidic Messiah and the fulfillment of prophecy. In Mark, as we've been seeing, he is the suffering servant who gives his life as a ransom for many. In Luke, he's the great physician who came to seek and save the lost. In the book of John, he is the good shepherd who lovingly lays down his life for his sheep. In the book of Acts, he is the Lord who is sovereignly building his church. In Romans, he is the good news which is the power of God to save Jew and Gentile. In Corinthians, he is the gracious Lord who is purifying his church. In Galatians, he is the object of saving faith, which saves and sanctifies. In Ephesians, he is the one who sovereignly calls the church and tells us how it is to walk in in light of his calling. In Philippians, he is the source of true joy that defies all circumstances. 
In Colossians, he is the all-sufficient Savior who are, we are to set our mind upon. In Thessalonians, he is the imminent return, returning king that is taught to bring comfort to his bride. In Timothy and Titus, he is the gracious Lord who orders his church and sustains her ministry. In Philemon, he is the forgiving Savior that makes it possible for Christians who sin against one another to be reconciled and to live together in fellowship. In Hebrews, he is the supreme one who is greater than the angels, greater than Moses, greater than the priests, greater than the old sacrificial system. In Peter, he is the, in the epistles of Peter, he is the compassionate Lord who cares for the church in exile. In 1 John, he is the one who is faithful and just to forgive our sins. In 2 and 3 John, in Jude, he is the Lord of the church who cares about sound doctrine. And he is the one who Revelation tells us will return for his bride. Friends, this is Jesus. Do you know him? 